PyreUnknown's Battlegrounds has gone live with new updates on its test server, and patch 1.0 is a big one, including lots of little changes to the UI, gameplay, and animation that make it a genuinely new experience. Despite the servers still being somewhat buggy, we've delved into the test servers to bring you our take, expert as it is. So here are eight of our favourite new things in PUBG's patch 1.0. Now, we know that when you think of an update to an exciting game like PUBG, the first thing you think about isn't font. Actually, font wouldn't even be the third or fourth thing you'd think about. But honestly, the change in font for patch 1.0 really does make a difference. It's not just that feeds have been shuffled around on screen or that certain things have been made bigger. It's just... Everything looks so much more professional now. Less like a modded game and more like something cohesive and considered and, well, expensive that stands on its own two feet. It almost makes us believe that there won't be bugs and crashes every five seconds. As if. But such is the power of a good font. Look at it all there. Ah, oh, lovely. In what many players will think of as the most exciting change to patch 1.0, PUBG has added two new weapons, the DP-28 and the Org A3. The DP-28 you can find out in the wilderness, and in fact, we found it in pretty much the first house we looted in our very first run on the test servers. Its distinctive round magazine makes it very easy to spot, taking 7.62mm ammo. You can attach sights and a 4 times scope, and it has a low firing rate, but a long, effective firing range with high damage. At least that's what it says in the patch notes, because we didn't actually get a chance to test it before this happened. Cruel. The Org A3, on the other hand, can be obtained from care packages. It sort of replaces the Car 98K, which will no longer be available in care packages from 1.0 onwards. The Org is described as a bullpup assault rifle using a 5.56mm 30 round magazine before attachments, with a high muzzle velocity, high rate of fire and low vertical recoil. Sounds lovely, though of course you'll have to fight off every other player in the immediate vicinity if you actually want to own one. Good luck with that. One of our favourite moments from E3 this year was hearing fans cheer, genuinely cheer, as PUBG's creative director announced Mantling was coming to his game at the PC Gaming Conference. It tells you a lot about this game, I think, and you know what? It's an exciting change. We've been testing out vaulting and climbing on the test server, and it definitely changes how you think about the game's terrain. You can climb over fences and on top of large boxes, and you can even climb through windows instead of using doors. And listen, if you're a PUBG fan, this stuff is important. The world is your oyster, and if you're not super into the game, you probably think we sound a little bit ridiculous getting so worked up over something as simple as climbing on boxes, which I guess is fair. How many times have you been running along in PUBG, minding your own business, only to get insta-killed by a headshot out of nowhere? Well, finally, with this update, it'll be possible to watch a kill cam and figure out who shot you and from where. I mean, it won't make you feel a lot better about what just happened, but maybe it'll provide a useful learning experience for us all. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, in the test server right now, kill cams can be activated via the game settings. The feature seems to be turned off by default, and you can then watch them through the results screen after you've been robbed of your chicken dinner. It's worth knowing, by the way, that if you're playing with either duos or squads, that you can only check the kill cam after all your team members have been killed. We don't know about you, but we've sort of developed a Pavlovian response to the lobby music in PUBG. All that time spent waiting for teammates, reloading into the game, opening crates. As inoffensive as the music is, it lodges itself in there and it lets you know you're in for a probably great, but also terrible time. But it was definitely time for a change. The new music is considerably more dramatic, reminding us of those moments in all the Marvel films where the hero has been knocked on his ass and now has to get back up and defeat the villain, and there's usually a slow motion shot of them looking all defiant and broody and a little bit like they've smelled a fart. That's the zone PUBG has kind of landed in with the new lobby music, and we're very much here for it.
Changing up a map screen wouldn't be such a big deal in other games, but in something like PUBG, where you spend a very large portion of your time staring at and laying down markers on a big chunk of green and grey, it's quite refreshing to have a bit of a change of pace. The maps have been slightly altered to add just a little bit of extra detail, and to make roads and other things of interest a touch more distinguishable at a glance. Like so many other cosmetic improvements on patch 1.0, it doesn't sound like that much until you're actually there in the game, and then they all add up to what feels like a much slicker, more streamlined experience. If you can make Team Eurogamer feel more proficient at staying alive, you know you're doing something right. So Team Eurogamer has spent enough time playing PUBG by now that we're pretty much prepared for any situation. Well, not prepared in a literal winning sense, but we know what's going to happen when we hear a certain noise or investigate a certain spot at a certain time, because we've seen it all before. And if we've reached that level of understanding, just imagine what it's like for actual good, talented players. Skilled players who have learned to read the environment and take clues from what they see and hear. But if you were to suddenly change all that, take away all those familiar sounds and replace them with something new, then the tables don't so much turn as get blown up. On our first solo match on the test server, we were looting a house when a bunch of very loud explosions started going off outside. It wasn't a red zone, so what was it? A new grenade sound? A new weapon? A vehicle engine? I'd like to say we bravely went to find out, but we just cowered in the corner instead. It's good to have that air of mystery and some sweaty palmed moments back. But a little bit later we did encounter a red zone, his Aoife getting whacked by one of the bombs and getting downed. As you can hear, the sound effects for those bombs have changed a lot, so at least you'll have something interesting to listen to while you're lying on the ground calling for a revive. So those are just some of the changes that we're excited about, but the patch notes are long and this is all still on the test server, so very much open to change. Is there anything in particular that you're excited about seeing in Erangel? Let us know in the comments and do subscribe for more from Eurogamer, including our weekly silliness in PUBG, which you can catch live every Tuesday. Thanks for watching, goodbye.